The reopening of the 140-year-old St. Rock Market in 2015 was greeted with fanfare from city officials, residents, and tourism leaders. Yeah, but that's been replaced by closed stalls and dwindling customers. Investigative reporter Mike Perlstein reveals the last-ditch effort to keep the market from closing altogether. For 130 years, it stood as an icon in this neighborhood, and now, I think that we'll put it back in a place that's going to last for the next 300 years. Back in April 2015, then Mayor Mitch Landrew cut the ribbon and ushered new life into the St. Rock Market, the city's second oldest public market still in operation. Only the French market is older. It was probably had four or five people waiting in line. Renovated by the city at a cost of nearly $4 million, the operators of the multi-vendor food hall hope to draw a mixture of locals and newly arrived hipsters to the fast-growing St. Claude Business Corridor, anchoring the Bywater. And for about five years, it did. It's Saturday, you can't find a seat in here. You gotta wait. Then came the COVID pandemic shutdown, stalled development in the neighborhood, and the departure of several high-profile food innovators who got their start at one of the market's dozen stalls. Tung Nguyen, who launched T2 Street Food here, was one of them. You know, this is a great structure for up-and-coming chefs and restaurant tours and stuff, just to see how the business is. But as you can see, the number of workers often outnumbers the number of customers, even during lunch hour. Several food stalls are empty, the building needs repairs, and even more critically, the operator says the market is losing money. Revealed in this series of emails obtained by Channel 4 through a public records request, leaseholder Will Donaldson wrote that pre-COVID sales of about $4 million a year have dipped below $2 million. Not only did Donaldson say he's operating in the red, but in this August 8th email, he said he was ready to announce a permanent closure. Very demoralizing, very depressing. Like I Kevin said Petto, owner of CR Coffee, is one of the market's original vendors. You know, if St. Rock closes, it's, that's kind of like losing a part of the family. Following a series of emails from Donaldson about maintenance issues, a short-lived proposal to close temporarily to allow time for repair, and finally, a proposed August 20th closure date, Donaldson offered another idea. The plan would be that, um, they would, that Will would transfer his lease with the city of New Orleans to me and then I would be running the market. The proposed lease transfer is still under negotiation, but Petto believes he can revitalize the market. We've got to fill it in because this place is at its best when it's full. St. Rock feels, this building feels amazing when it's full. Donaldson was not available for an interview, but some previous vendors say the market stalled under his leadership. Operating as the Politan Group, Donaldson and his partners also opened the Pythian Market and Auction House Market food halls, only to see both close after four years. But those were private ventures. St. Rock is a city property and an important piece of New Orleans history. I'm going to make the assumption, this is the assumption, that the city doesn't want to see this building close either. Petto is so sure that St. Rock can succeed, he has reached out to some of the early vendors to try and lure them back. Wynn was one of the first to say yes. You sound like you are eager to come back. Absolutely, I'm eager to come back. Mike Perlstein, Eyewitness News. In a statement, Donaldson wrote, quote, we are excited about the possibility to transfer the market to a great long-term steward in Kevin Pado. He has been with the market since the beginning and lives in the neighborhood. The deal isn't done yet, but we're trying to find something the city will approve and appreciate everyone's patience.